Okay, so you're at a stage where you know what kind of research you want to do in your PhD, but you're looking for a supervisor, or you know a few supervisors that they're working on this research, you found them through the universities or through people that you know, and then you want to see exactly what kind of research they do currently and which part of the research they're boosting more. So the very first thing that I would suggest for everyone is check the Google Scholar. I'm sure that you all know that. You just land on the Google Scholar page. Google is pretty similar, but it doesn't organize very well the publications. So if you're looking for a particular publication and you know the title, you can search on Google and you will find it straight away. But if you're looking for a set of publications by a particular author, then I would recommend you to go to the sister website, the Google Scholar, and find it from there. So once you land on the Google Scholar, if you're signed in with your, say, with your Google account, then you will get this search bar at the top where you can search by name or by publication or by a few keywords. Now, uh, a very cool feature about Google Scholar is that if you're connected and you have a profile and you already have some publications, it sends to you some recommended articles to read. And these are sometimes linked with your work. For instance, uh, people who have already cited your work or there are some common words that they are linked to each other. So it is very good to have a go through that like on a weekly basis and see what's out there, what has been published recently uh, relevant to your work. But that's for another video. So let's focus back to doing your own search. So if you are in the first case where you don't know uh, the supervisor, then I would type just a few keywords all together and then I would go through the search. For instance, I would say uh, steel, um, structures, uh, design. Okay, and I would look, I would start looking at um, the publications and where they're coming from. The problem with Google Scholar is that if you don't know the name of the supervisor and you don't know a particular title of an article, it will be hard to find where to look for. In Google Scholar, you get more when you actually search by names. That is far more useful. So I'll put down my uh, name just to give you an idea of uh, how you can go about searching. So uh, first of all, you see overall the profile and then below you can see uh, some of the most cited papers are coming down here, especially the ones that they have a source that you can go and find the paper. If you click the source, it takes you straight to the website where the paper is published from. Um, and of course, you can click on the name and then you can get more information about the background. Um, at the beginning, you see the papers. Uh, at the very top one is the most cited one. Uh, but you can click on the year and you can get more information about what are the most recent papers. And this is what you want to look for. In fact, you want to have an idea of uh, where uh, this person is publishing and what kind of research is doing the last two to three years. So that will give you a good indication as to whether you would like to join that group. Uh, also, another cool feature is the view all here where you can see the citations per year. And it is, again, one of the things that perhaps you, you, you would like to see is whether there is an upward trend or a downward or is more stabilized, how many papers, how many citations they gain every year. So that, that also shows whether the research that this person is doing is more timely and topical than others. Here at the bottom, you can see uh, the co-authors and collaborations. You can't get too much out of this because this is edited. So we can click the edit button and we can change this. And I'm going backwards. So here you can do a similar search by clicking on the anytime. So um, I would recommend that you go to say since 2018 so you can see all the papers that a person has published since 2018. So it gives you again a good indication of what are the current ongoing research projects that this person's got. 
Uh, you can include patterns if you want just to check more or you can go to review papers and you can see the review papers of that person and other associated review papers that they're coming up. So that's um, a very simple, straightforward and good platform in getting a lot of information for your potential supervisor. The second one that I would like to show is ResearchGate. Now on this, as you can see, I'm now already logged in in my profile. It's totally free to make your own profile. You don't have to be an academic, you don't have to be a researcher having published work. So you can make a free account and you can have access to this huge repository. Uh, I would advise you to do that as soon as you are applying for a PhD because in this way you will be able to find more information about the potential supervisors. So um, first of all, you can look at that number at the top. It's not necessarily very indicative about the performance of the supervisor, but it gives you a little bit of information about as to whether the supervisor is uploading stuff, is interactive, he's got a good network of people, others they are actually reading uh, his or her papers. So it's just an indicative number, I would say. Don't, it's not a really hard number. So the other thing that you can look at is the research group on the right hand side. Again, don't take that for granted. It's not definite, it doesn't mean too much, but it's a good indication to see with whom your potential supervisor is working with. If the potential supervisor is a lab head, then you can see all the members, most likely PhD students, MSc students, and postdocs who are working with that person. It doesn't necessarily mean that all these people are still working actively, but who belongs in that group? Now, the idea is that when someone is leaving the group, they should be removed because otherwise they will not be able to make their own group on ResearchGate. So just bear in mind that maybe your potential supervisor is a member of a group and is not leading that. It doesn't necessarily mean that in reality this person does not have his or her own group. Now, another cool feature of ResearchGate is the projects. So you're more interested to get an idea of the projects because here you can see uh, the titles and how many papers are under the titles and what kind of papers. So it's a more informed search about the potential supervisor, getting an idea of which projects are active, which ones are archived and where the focus is put on. So uh, very important to get to the projects and, and check around. And also another thing is that on uh, ResearchGate, as well as in other similar repositories, um, researchers can publish preprints. And the good thing is that you can get an idea of what's the most recent work that the supervisor is doing. Most likely will be similar to what you will be doing as well. So again, extremely important to uh, have an idea about the ongoing work of the supervisor. Scopus is one of these websites that you definitely want to go through. It gives some very good stats about the potential supervisor's performance, is linked to Elsevier, comes from Elsevier, therefore you may not get the full picture, but you will see uh, how this person does in good uh, peer-reviewed conferences and articles, how many citations they've got, and everything which is very legit, you will be able to get a good idea of the supervisor. So I would recommend you, you go to Scopus, search by author, and you put the surname and the initial of the first name of the author, maybe the uh, affiliation as well, the university, and you should be able to track the performance of that um, author. Um, last but not least is to check the actual author's website, the university website. So here you can see my website and some information that may be helpful for your decision. Not every supervisor is uploading a lot of information, so bear in mind that so you may not find too much. 
Uh, another cool feature that most of the web pages they've got is that they give all the conferences, all the journals. This is not updated for myself, but there is also an, a way that you can present only the most important papers. And it's good to have an idea of what the supervisor considers as the most important papers. Again, through that web page, you will find other personal links on media as well as other web pages. For instance, web pages related to projects. Like in my case, 3D MBC is another group, part of my group, because it's dealing with these 3D printed modular building connections. And again, it's good to have an idea of what the project is all about, especially if it's a project that you're about to join, to have an idea on the people, who is on that uh, project, uh, people that you will work with most likely, and other collaborators of the project, partners, especially if there is funding, are the resources that you can support your um, uh, PhD. And of course, projects, extremely important, and publications. Um, maybe your project is also listed on here, so definitely you want to look at that and publications just to see what kind of um, papers, where they are published, what kind of research they do. Extremely, extremely important, so don't miss out that. Now, in my case, I also have a uh, blog spot from Google where it is an active CV. So a lot of academics, they either upload somewhere on um, ResearchGate, Academia, I do, or somewhere else, their CV and they keep on updating it year after year. You can see actually uh, the whole story about that academic. Uh, I have done something similar and other academics, they're doing it online. So it's an active uh, online uh, CV. So you can get the publications, you can get projects, funding, anything. Also important to have a look at what the professor is doing. So go to synergetic activities and see the companies that the project is working with. Um, maybe a material related to teaching and education. Again, something very important. You would like to have a supervisor who's a good educator as well, a good teacher. Um, under the vacancies or like a new posts and stuff, you may get some very useful information as well. And now I'm talking, of course, about my profile, but similar kind of information are presented in most of the academics who have a personal web page. And uh, of course, you can get all the uh, links and connections and media uh, profiles of the academic just to give you a better idea of how active that academic is and how much is promoting the work. So what is the impact of the work? Um. In another video, I'll take you to the most used repositories for finding publications, research articles, and just to give you a few cool features of each one of these, we will also do a kind of a comparison to see how many outcomes are coming from every source of uh, platform and uh, uh, what's the most appropriate for your use. Hope you found that video useful. Uh, hopefully with this information you will be much more prepared going for an, an interview, a PhD interview and if you also meet all the other criteria you will be successful. If you really like that video and you want to see more of this please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done already. Until then, see you next time.